Now, it's time for the KSNT Sports Award-Winning Football Frenzy with Glenn Kenley and Lainey Gerber. Welcome to Football Frenzy. I'm Glenn Kinley. And I'm Lainey Gerber. Lainey, it's the quarterfinals, sectionals, I don't care what you want to call it. These teams are getting so close to that state title, you can almost smell it. Oh, that's right. And it's late enough now that we know every team left is really solid. No easy wins at this point in the playoffs. And like you said, these teams have their eyes on a championship trophy. Yeah, I want a newcomer of the year award trophy. My freshman year high school and cross country teams so very similar. Yeah, it's basically the same thing. Uh, <laughs> all right, well, let's jump right into this action. We start tonight with Two undefeated teams. It's win or go home for Holton and Gerard. We start our night with the Holton defense. Dustin Shermock bringing down the quarterback for a sack. And check this out. The guy is absolutely fired up. Oh, I yeah. love the energy there. Offense now. Jaden Fletcher running it for the Wildcats. He's back there somewhere. Ref says he's in the end zone. It's a touchdown. There he is. That's his friend to get me a better view there. Holton leads early back to the defense. Jake Zeller back in coverage. He's got himself an interception. All Holton so far. They're having a lot of fun out there. Offense again. Garrison Booth this time punching it in on the ground. Holton is up big. It's defense, offense, defense, offense, defense. This time it's Lucas Adcock Holton. Gets it back on a turnover for the third time in the first half. The pattern continues. Offense, Jaden Fletcher again. Touchdown. Holton says to Gerard, oh no, your undefeated season. It's broken. Oh no. Broken it is. Holton with a statement win. 36 to 0 the final. Those guys are just too good. Oh yeah, offense, defense, perfect recipe Let's for see. a playoff yeah. win. Well, Riverton is in the dog pound tonight. Rossville has a big target on its back as reigning state champs. First quarter, Corey Capturin, he's going to hand it off to Trenton Barker. Barker's taking the outside route, has pressure, but makes it in the end zone. Making it look easy. Oh, yeah. Second quarter, Barker's going to get the ball again, and he punches it in again. Rossville's up by two scores now. They have a good offense. And would you look who it is? Tori Horak is in at QB. He's keeping Ooh. the ball here and running like he never left. Big game for the dogs and big to have him back. Here, Horak throws it up to Tegan Kipps. Big game, big play, big day for Horak's return. And that leads to this handoff to Corey Katrin. Very weird here. He gets this one in the end zone. A wild story for an important night for the Dogs. They win 56 to 14. The return of Tori Horak. Let's go to Manhattan. It's Lawrence at Manhattan. Indians fired up, ready to go. Be careful though, they almost hit our cameraman here. Stay safe out there, Jacob. Here come the Manhattan offense. Vinny Smith, we've been calling his name all year long. Mm -hmm. Big gain here to move the chains. Got to finish it, though. Talik Houston, that's a football guy name right there. He's a football guy. Touchdown, Indians. Lawrence is going to get one back, though. Avion Nelson, it is, tying it up. How about some special teams action? Vinny Smith. It ain't Benny and the Jets. It's Vinny and the Jets. Turning on the Jets. Right to the cameraman again. He's got some speed. He's got some moves. Getting them all the way into the red zone. Again, it doesn't matter if you don't punch it into the end zone. They go QB keeper on the next one. Keenan Sharks keeps it for himself. Touchdown, Manhattan. A good football game, but it's all Lawrence in the second half. Indians do not advance to the semifinal. They fall in this one 41 to 22. Man, but what a game for Vinny Smith. Yeah. Well, Wellsville is at Silver Lake tonight. It's a battle for that semifinal spot. And I love this duo, Dagan Kruger. Handoff to Brogan Renfro. Renfro's too swifty to take down. He's in for the touchdown. Awesome names, too. And bars that I just had right yeah. there. Krugan keeps it here. Kruger, excuse me, keeps it here and punches it in. Could be punching a ticket to semis, too. Kruger using the field here. Pass to Cameron Canaper. Hits him with the juke, stiff arm, and steps over him. Ooh. He's in for the score and another stiff arm there in the end on top. Wellsville tries to come back, but the 14 points in the final eight minutes isn't enough. Eagles win it 33-27. to 27. Dare I say, time. fly, Eagles, fly. Fly, Eagles, fly. Let's go to Rock Creek. The Mustangs are playing well at the right time. Let's see if they can stay hot tonight, hosting Frontenac. Trailing early, Dalton Whitworth goes to Ethan Burgess. It's a catch, but it's called back. Truly a shame, if you ask me. Whitworth and Burgess say it's okay. We'll do it again. Even better catch. This one does stay and Check out the slow-mo for you. What a catch on the sideline there. Would you believe me if I said Whitworth goes to Burgess again? There you know it is. I would. <laughs> this time for a touchdown to tie the game. Whitworth again. Feeling inclusive. You don't want to leave anybody out. This time to Dagan Vinduska, or should I say Vinduces. We'll see you later. He's going to take it all the way. And you know I love the big hits, Laney. Yancey Spiller. 
I like this guy because he delivers a big hit here. Oh my goodness. Not a man you want to make angry. Rock Creek puts up a good fight, but Frontenac runs away in the second half. Congrats to the Mustangs on a terrific season. They fall tonight, though, 42 to 26. They really did have a great season. Yeah. Well, Andover Central is at Wamigo tonight. Red Raiders looking to avenge last year's loss in the state sectionals. There's all those fans. Hayden Ovi is at the controls as usual. He keeps it here, ditches three tackles, and outruns a couple more. Ooh, Gets nice hit, move. but still can't be pulled down until after he picks up a first down. Here he gets out of another and throws it to Colin Donahue with the sliding snag. And speaking of ditching tackles, Hagen Johnson's on the punt return, jumping through guys there. Unfortunately, though, it's called back for a block in the back, and Man. that's just the Red Raiders' luck all night. They fall 48 to nothing. Rough ending. Hayden Oviatt, though, only a junior. He'll be back next year. Let's oh, look yeah. at some other sectional final scores. Andel at Concordia. Andel winning big on the road, 54-14. And Jeff County North at Olpe. Olpe wants a trip to state, winning 28 to nothing. Staying undefeated. It is Olpe. Linden at Centralia. Centralia are winners there, 53 to 22. And in eight man football, Axel's at Waverly. Axel wins 62 to 16. Whew, a lot of football. Things got real tonight, Laney. They say when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. I'm all about the cliches. We saw the tough teams in our area really stand up tonight. Oh, absolutely. And how about Rossville and Silver Lake both winning tonight? They're actually going to match That's up right. next week in the semis. We're on 24 playoff edition. It doesn't get much better. I than don't that. think it does. And we got to talk about Holton. Check this out. The program from Holton tonight says fearless. And these guys were fearless. They played an undefeated team, shut them out, beat them by over 30 points. That's the game I was at. They looked good. I mean, they're not messing around. Holton. The real deal. And breaking an undefeated team season, that's not easy to do, especially not in the playoffs. Yeah, and, and we got to talk about the 1A win, Opie, as well. I read something on Twitter before this. I wrote it down. They've only allowed 12 points all season. 12 points combined wow. all season. Every game but one, they shut out their opponent. I think that's good. Well, and I remember Opie is actually barely uh, on the cutoff for a 1A team. So if yeah. they were an 8-man, that would be... They, yeah, they're actually one of the smaller 1A teams, and they're just running over opponents. Absolutely, and reigning state champs there, too. You that's know. right. Can't L expect Lady, anything less. Would you kill me if I transitioned us to basketball really quickly? No, I wouldn't because if you know me, I'm a big basketball girl. That's right. So. Well, the Jayhawks <laughs> did play tonight. They played Tarleton State. It's a win for the Jayhawks, as you would expect. They take care of business, 88 to 62. You can go back to football. Now. Okay, thank you. Back to football. K-State hosts West Virginia tomorrow, and KU is at Texas. Should, should be good ones. T KU's got their work cut out for them. I think there's a pretty big spread on the Vegas line in that one. But you never know. And K-State hasn't beat West Virginia since 2015. So. Yeah, and a lot of those KU guys, more than half of their team is actually from Texas. So a lot yeah. of them wanted to be recruited by Texas growing up and didn't get that. So that's going to light a little fire. A under little them. revenge game for, mo for, for, for both it might be. The K-State players have lost to West Virginia the last many years in a row. And those KU players might be like, hey, you didn't recruit us. Come down here and beat them. Absolutely. A lot of revenge for tomorrow's games for sure. That's right. That's right. We got some D2 action as well. Emporia State and Washburn finishing up their seasons tomorrow. It's senior day for the Ichabods. Yeah. So make sure you head out to Yeager Stadium to catch them for the last time. That's right. For now, thank you so much for joining us on Football Frenzy. Have a good night. And Gabby's back after the break to tell us how long this football weather is going to last.